Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome again to the daily war room briefing from the Jerusalem Center for Policy Affairs. Um, I'm Maurice Hirsch. I'm joined today with uh, uh, Yoni Ben Menachem to bring you the latest updates from Israel's war with uh, Hamas. Um, just the, the recap as we give every day, just to make sure that everyone is on board and knows where we're starting. We're talking about the massacre that started on the 7th of October, um, 2023. Now, 23 days ago, um, it started at about 6.15 in the morning with over 3,000 terrorists infiltrating from Gaza into Israel, attacking 30 different civilian uh, um, locations, cities, villages, um, kibbutzim along the border with Gaza, as well as military installations. Um, during the course of the massacre, the terrorists murdered over 1,400 people, um, over 260 at a nature uh, a party that had been taking place through the night and uh, um, and in the different uh, uh, locations. Babies, women, children, elderly, everyone was murdered. Um, and those that weren't murdered were injured, over 5,000 injured. And those that weren't murdered or injured, um, either physically or, or, or mentally, um, were kidnapped and uh, taken into Gaza. We now have, the number has been increased from uh, uh, from our Friday broadcast from 222 uh, um, confirmed incidents of kidnapping to 230 confirmed incidences of kidnapping. There's probably over 250. That is the estimate um, that's been running around. Um, that was Hamas's attack. Whilst they were carrying out the attack, they were accompanied also by rocket fire um, and by missile fire from um, the Gaza Strip into Israel. That rocket fire and missile fire has continued on all through uh, um, the last three weeks. We have now had over 8,500 rockets fired at Israel during that period. Um, many of those rockets targeting um, all of our civilian population almost around the entire country, from um, from the north, Akko, um, to the south, uh, towards Elat, and everywhere in the, in the regions in between. Jerusalem has been targeted. Tel Aviv, Herzliya, and Netanya, all of the main areas of Israel's uh, civilian population and industry. Um, schools have been closed down for the last uh, a few weeks, only now getting back to a little bit of a routine um, once we've uh, established that there are enough um, uh, um, air raid shelters and bunkers for the kids to run into. Um, that's on the front of the Gazans and, and the terrorist attack on Israel. Israel has obviously been uh, um, fighting back. On the first day of the fighting, there were over 1,500 of the terrorists who were killed um, by our forces immediately um, who came into contact with them. Since uh, the 7th of October, Israel has conducted over 11,000 strikes um, in Gaza from the air, um, attacking, them, attacking literally hundreds and thousands of um, Hamas sites, infrastructure, weaponry, um, weapon stockades, um, and, uh, and and command centers and individual terrorists, um, many of them already uh, are being taken out. Um, just in the last 24 hours, the IDF carried out 450 airstrikes. Um, so it was quite a substantial um, last uh, uh, 24 hours. It was accompanied also by, as we'd uh, uh, reported previously, minor incursions into the Gaza Strip going in and out on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, that took a different uh, um, uh, pace already uh, on Friday night when there was a much more substantive um, incursion of Israeli forces in into the Gaza Strip and now not pulling out, um, but rather staying in and destroying the terrorist targets uh, um, on the ground. What we also saw last night, which is of utmost importance really for, for understanding the nature of the conflict of Israel with Hamas, was the reports of the IDF spokesman about the Shifa hospital. This is Gaza City's um, biggest hospital. Um, and uh, the description given was that it is clearly being used by the terrorists. And this is something really that we've known for a long time by the terrorists as a central spot for their headquarters and command centers, um, intentionally using and abusing the hospital, hoping that any, uh, um, any attempted strike on the hospital We'll just meet with the condemnation of the international community. Um, that's how the terrorists work. Whilst Israel tries to defend 
our citizens and, and even foreign citizens and even the Gazan citizens, the Hamas and other terrorists in the Gaza Strip intentionally use those uh, uh, innocent civilians as a human shield. Um, they have uh, no uh, problem using hospitals, schools, UN installations and uh, mosques and any other uh, um, sensitive sites um, in that mission. Their goal is obviously double sorted. They use them to attack Israel, hoping that Israel won't attack back and that if Israel does attack back and those sites are destroyed, then they will be able to obviously cry foul and uh, uh, blame Israel for all types of uh, uh, different uh, uh, um, uh, crimes that they that they say have been committed. Um, what we've seen, unfortunately, in the last uh, um, three weeks is uh, many uh, um, broadcasting uh, um, companies, media companies, as well as UN officials and some other officials really soaking up the, 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 the terrorist propaganda and accusing Israel of attacking the El Ali uh, um, hospital which in uh, and the death of 500 people, which in uh, uh, hindsight turned out to be a complete lie. It was actually struck by um, a missile that had backfired or misfired by the, uh, by the Palestinian Islamic Jihad um, and uh, killed a, a dozen or so people. Um, obviously, the numbers of dead there were completely inflated. The accusation of Israel was baseless, um, but it didn't stop media outlets from carrying that report and indeed those reports staying on uh, um, until today. That's really uh, um, the, the, the southern uh, um, area. Um, moving up to the north with Hezbollah, um, the attacks from Hezbollah have continued on. Hezbollah is sitting on our northern border, has for the last three weeks constantly been um, shooting small barrages of, of, of missiles and rockets, anti-tank uh, 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 rockets against our forces on the northern border. Hezbollah, similar to Hamas, is a Iranian proxy, and the idea is to undermine the whole region, to destroy the, the what were and, and did appear to be the fruitful discussions between Israel and Saudi Arabia to expand the Abraham Accords all the way from the Arabian Sea in the east um, to Morocco in the, in the west. Um, that obviously annoyed the Iranians, and they've been doing their utmost in order to undermine uh, those efforts to, uh, um, to expand uh, uh, the peace. Um, in Judea and Samaria, what we've seen in the last 24 hours is continued um, anti-terror activities against uh, uh, Hamas and other terrorists, another 100 or so people, terrorists being arrested. Um, what we saw this morning as well was the, the destruction of the house of the terrorists who murdered Lucy D and her, her two daughters um, uh, at Pesach. Um, so this is a, another uh, um, part of that fight against terrorism. Hamas terrorists, obviously, they're involved. And we also saw the destruction of the house of Salah al um, one of the, uh, um, the 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 deputy head of, of of Hamas and one of the people integrally involved in um, the October seven massacre. Um, those are the three different main areas within Israel. Um, it's important to note that 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 everything seems to be continuing on quite peacefully with the Israeli Arab population. Whilst there were initial fears that. Um, we would see recurrences of the violence um, that we saw in May 2021, um, where the large parts of the Israeli Arab population rose up specifically in um, uh, the mixed towns and, uh, and, and carried out hundreds of terrorist attacks. This time, we are thankfully seeing um, a relative uh, calm on, on, on the home front, as it were. Um, and, and, and so whilst that calm remains, um, other events that would possibly be uh, a source of friction, are also passing by relatively quietly. The prayers uh, um, on the Temple Mount on Friday, um, attended by, 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 by thousands of people, um, also went by relatively without incident. And so, uh, thankfully, on that front, um, we are seeing um, um, quite a, a substantial and a, a, and a very welcome calm. Um, what we're going to discuss today with Yoni is a... Um, is a, is a few different ideas, um, mainly the uh, the question of is Hamas planning to carry out terror attacks around the world as part of this terror campaign? Um, we've seen uh, uh, Hamas release a number of statements saying that um, they have many surprises 
um, in place for the Zionist enemy. We saw Musa Abu Marzouk um, saying that the, uh, Hamas has no intention of limiting this struggle, um, limiting the terror um, to just destroying Israel, but also uh, their goal is to internationalize the terror um, and take it abroad as well. So what we're going to discuss a little bit, Yoni, is, is on that idea, what, how do you see that developing? Um, what are the chances that, that, that Hamas, similar to Hezbollah, just a, 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 as, as, a, as a reminder for, for some of our, our viewers, Hezbollah in the past has on a numerous has on numerous different occasions taken um, the uh, its fight against Israel to um, the international arena and has targeted uh, um, Israelis, Jews, and and Jewish uh, societies and Jewish uh, inst institutions um, abroad. Um, how is this going to play out? Do we think that this is something that Hamas is looking to do as well, Yoni? Well, we have to say that uh, since the terror organization of Hamas was uh, established in uh, 1987, uh, the leadership of this terrorist organization at that time decided uh, not to uh, carry out uh, terror attacks against Israelis uh, abroad and to concentrate uh, its uh, terror efforts only uh, within the uh, borders of what is called occupied uh, Palestine, that means in Judea and Samaria, in Gaza Strip, and also inside Israel, in the Green Line. And this is contrary to the terror policy of the PLO at that time that were carried out a series of terror attacks in Israeli and Jewish targets abroad. One of the branches of the, of the PLO at that time to carry out attacks abroad was the Black September Terror Organization. As uh, we remember, they committed the massacre in 1972 of the uh, Israeli athletes at the uh, uh, Munich uh, Olympic Games. Uh, I uh, tried to uh, speak for with Hamas, uh, senior people in Hamas in Gaza Street, but of course all of them are hiding. But I did speak to uh, some Palestinians that I know for many years in the Gaza Strip who are uh, apparently uh, talking to Hamas leaders or have contacts uh, with them, uh, those leaders who are hiding. And, and they're saying that uh, uh, because Israel declared a war on Hamas uh, and uh, intends to eliminate uh, Hamas uh, and uh, uh, Hamas is considering now to uh, widen the war against Israel, and for the first time they are considering it, there's no decision yet, but for the, for the first time since this terror organization was established, they are uh, considering uh, starting uh, attacks on uh, Jewish and Israeli targets abroad. This is a, a very uh, dangerous de development. Uh, we have to uh, say that such a decision uh, needs the approval of the, what is called the Shura Council uh, of Hamas. Uh, so far, they haven't taken the decision, but apparently Hamas is uh, thinking uh, about this uh, possibility, thinking in that direction, because it now, after the Israeli incursion into the north of Gaza Strip, now maybe they start realizing that uh, Israel is, is serious and uh, this is not uh, a game of... Uh, of psychological warfare. So they are also uh, preparing uh, other options. Uh, I mean, Hamas... You mentioned the, the, the Shura Council on a number of occasions. What can you tell us about the Shura Council? Who are members in the Shura Council? Where do they sit? Um, what do we know about them? Well, we know uh, very little about them because this is one of the uh, secret, uh, secret bodies of, uh, of Hamas. Uh, they are the uh, real uh, leadership of Hamas. Uh, there are senior members, we uh, might know a few names here and there, but uh, uh, they work uh, very secretly, and they are the one who, who decide the policy of this terror organization, uh, and, and also uh, what is considered this crucial decisions of going to war with Israel, not going to war with Israel, only to have a, a round of fighting for two or three days, they are the ones who make the decisions. Uh, it's very important uh, uh, to know that. 
Uh, and the, the idea is to get uh, the, the, the decision-making process is a, a process of co uh, consensus. Everything that is decided is decided by consensus of all the members of, uh, of this council. So uh, apparently they are the ones who also authorize the, uh, uh, the massacre uh, that happened on uh, October 7th. It's not only uh, Yihya Sinwar uh, and uh, Muhammad Def, uh, such a big decision uh, had to be uh, authorized also by the Shura uh, Council. Uh, so it's very important uh, to know that. In any case, uh, it seems that the Hamas understands that Israel uh, is serious about uh, uh, this uh, military operation and uh, determined, Israel is determined to eliminate all the Hamas uh, leadership. Uh, uh, and the uh, Hamas is uh, afraid uh, also that uh, if they go to uh, a, a war uh, against Israel uh, in different places all over the world, this can uh, be uh, counterproductive or boomerang. So this is why now they are considering it. There's no decision yet, but um, uh, such a, a, a opening of a new front of terror against Israel and Jewish targets, Israeli and Jewish targets all over the world can also affect uh, Hamas. They have... Uh, a system of collecting money for Hamas abroad, there are different institutions that are supposedly collecting money for charity and so on, but this money goes to Hamas. And also they have what they call the Dawa system, the, the preaching system of the mosques in different parts of the world. So they are now considering because they are afraid of reprisals, but by certain countries, like as uh, France, Britain, uh, if they start uh, doing the terror attacks against Israeli targets. So this is still under uh, consideration, no decision yet, but we have to take it into, uh, into account that this uh, is a, might be a very dangerous uh, uh, development. Uh, uh, Israel, as we know, uh, declared uh, a war not only on... Uh, Hamas in uh, the Gaza Strip, not only on the leadership and the terrorists in Gaza Strip, but all over the world. Uh, and um, this is uh, something very worrying for Hamas. They have a leadership uh, in uh, Doha, in Qatar. They have uh, leaders in Turkey. Uh, they have a military branch uh, offices uh, in Istanbul, in Turkey. Uh, and also, of course, in Lebanon, in Beirut, they have... Uh, 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 some leaders hiding there uh, in an office next to Hassan Nasrallah bunker in a Dahia neighborhood in Beirut. And they also have uh, secret operatives uh, in a few other countries uh, in the world, in Malaysia, uh, in Thailand, and other places. So now they fear, <coughs> sorry, now they fear that the Israeli Mossad will start uh, chasing them and eliminating them all over the world uh, in order to uh, take uh, revenge of this horrible massacre that happened in, uh, in the October the 7th. And uh, so they are considering this very seriously to retaliate by uh, terror attacks. Um, I think that uh, uh, it will not happen, if it will happen, if there will be a decision of the uh, Shura Council to, uh, to implement this new policy, I think it will take time since Hamas uh, Maurice doesn't have a uh, terror infrastructure abroad uh, since they were concentrating only on terror attacks uh, here in uh, Judea and Samaria, in Gaza, in Israel. Uh, so uh, they might be uh, forced to uh, ask the help of uh, Hezbollah uh, and Iran, who has uh, who have uh, terror infrastructure in a few places uh, in Europe, uh, South America, and other places or also uh, that they will uh, try to uh, connect uh, to Daesh, to ISIS, uh, that have also uh, some infrastru infrastructure in Europe uh, among the uh, refugees who fled from uh, Syria, from Iraq. So, uh, and also they can use the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, infrastructure, the Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, Brotherhood, uh, for instance, in Britain is very, uh, very developed. 
But of course, this will have repercussions uh, and um, reprisals because uh, Israel um, uh, gave all this uh, intelligence information uh, about uh, sleep, possible sleepers and possible uh, terror uh, uh, nets uh, connected to Hamas or ISIS or, uh, or, or, the, or Iran or Hezbollah. They gave this information uh, to the uh, intelligence uh, uh, security apparatuses in, uh, in Europe, such as MI6, such as uh, the CIA, uh, the German intelligence. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, Israel is, uh, is uh, getting ready for such a possibility. I think, um, uh, Yoni, it, it would be a, it would possibly be a, a, a remiss to to assume that, and and Hamas uh, said today uh, in an interview that I saw that they took into account um, that there would be a, a substantial Israeli response. Um, I think it would probably be remiss to assume that they don't have terror capabilities also in Europe um, and in in other uh, other countries. I think that that it's something that they could have already prepared for. Um, con considering an Israeli response um, of of a widespread nature, and because they're, they're terrorist organizations, that's the, the way that they work. If we see, um, I, I, I follow uh, uh, um, almost uh, religiously um, the process of seizing terror funds around the world, Hamas funds by different organizations, sometimes at the volition of of, of Israel, and sometimes um, actions of the ministers, uh, uh, minister of defense. And, and, and all the way through the period leading up to this attack, um, we saw a heightened period of activity and everything related to terror funding, seizing of not a small amount of, 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 of cryptocurrencies um, from around the world and orders being given and, and, and seizures abroad. abroad. So, so I think that, that it's possible that the, the, the Hamas activists uh, and, and terrorists around uh, the globe were also... Um, getting it, it getting prepared and we also know that that specifically in places as, as you mentioned like 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 uh, 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 Turkey where there is a, a, a not a small um Hamas presence um there we have already um Hamas associated organizations like the IHH that that, that participated in in the, in the Mavi Marmara the attempt to uh, breach the the maritime blockade in 2010 so we already know that there are those those connections with Turkish uh, um, uh, terror organizations. Uh, and, and so maybe that could be the connection. Hezbollah, Turkey, uh, um, Hamas all working together to carry out uh, um, those terror attacks already with people situated in Europe um, under the, uh, for, for a long period of time, Salah El um the deputy head of, of, of Hamas's Politburo, um, was situated in, in Turkey. And he has, I'm sure, um, not a small amount of connections and 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 friends connected to terror infrastructures um, already uh, in Turkey, and 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 so I think that could be possibly a, a focus for some of these uh, activities. Uh, Turkey Definitely. being obviously the the hotbed, um, as we saw the um, Erdogan's uh, uh, um, uh, um, mass rally that he organised. A million people, if if I'm not mistaken, according to their reports, um, all coming out with Erdogan uh, um, saying that Hamas are not terrorists, but that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu um, is a terrorist and that Israel is a terrorist state. Um, so maybe that's already their, their their basis for for functioning, and they'll be able to use that both a, a logistic and ideological basis um, to carry on the AKP. Um, in any case. Uh, is is a is a member of a, of the Muslim Brotherhood, um, Turkey's uh, leading party. Um, so so I think that, that that connection already exists there. No. Yeah, definitely, and we have to take also into consideration that uh, what is called the uh, the terror of individuals or the what we call in the professional language uh, lone wolves uh, terrorism, uh, Hamas activists who are living abroad. Uh, students uh, or just young Muslims, extreme Muslims, who will be affected by the the pictures coming from Gaza, uh, all over the hostile media, uh, and also the Hamas propaganda uh, on the social networks. They might be uh, affected by this incitement and just uh, 
uh, try to carry out uh, uh, attacks on the Israelis and Jews. You know, it could be uh, somebody with a knife, somebody with, with a car that will try to run down, uh, uh, God forbid, Israelis or Jews. Uh, there are many uh, methods for terrorism uh, uh, for uh, 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 committed by individuals. So this is very this is something that we have to take also into account. This is very important that uh, Jews uh, living uh, abroad and the Israelis going abroad should be very careful uh, now in, uh, where they go uh, the public places where they go into the where they go in the streets they should uh, look out for every everything for every possibility the terrorism might spread very quickly as a result of the war in Gaza. And another thing that I wanted uh, to mention uh, con concerning this uh, uh, terrorism of Hamas abroad uh, is that the estimation in the Israeli security establishment is that uh, some of the terrorists of the military uh, wing of Hamas in Gaza uh, will try to uh, flee from uh, Gaza to Egypt through tunnels on the border uh, of uh, uh, Rafah, on the border with, between Gaza Strip and Egypt. Uh, today, uh, I heard from uh, people in Gaza that the rumor is that uh, uh, the leaders of the military wing, the terrorist uh, Yahya Sinwar and Muhammad Def, they already uh, prepared an escape, uh, escape plan from uh, Gaza to Egypt in case uh, the IDF goes deeply into uh, Gaza and try to kill them, and they uh, planning to uh, escape uh, by the tunnels. There are tunnels under the uh, in the Rafah areas under the border where they smuggle weapons into Gaza from Egypt. Uh, so they might uh, try to use it uh, to escape to Egypt if they if they feel the Israeli pressure on them increasing. Um, uh, other uh, terrorists might also uh, try to use this. Uh, a uh, route uh, to uh, go into uh, Sinai and join ISIS, uh, join ISIS in Sinai, and from there commit uh, commit terror attacks uh, uh, against uh, Israel, uh, uh, against Elat, against Taba, launching rockets and, and so on. So also Sinai, uh, which is now the north of Sinai, which is uh, now relatively quiet because of the. A, a, a big, a big campaign of the Egyptian army against the ISIS uh, a, a branch in the north of Sinai. Uh, might this whole situation might change if uh, terrorists from Gaza uh, Strip will uh, will escape from uh, from Gaza through the tunnels, go to uh, the other side to Sinai and join ISIS in the north of Sinai. This is something that we have uh, to take uh, to to take into consideration. Uh, we have to remember, uh, Yoni, that, that, that just recently there, um, there was that terrorist attack from the Sinai into Israel um, that, 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 that also took the lives of not a, not a small amount of people. Um, also a surprise attack, which, which allowed the terrorists to, to similarly breach the border. Obviously, smaller numbers, an attack, um, uh, an, an IDF uh, uh, outpost. Um, so, so that, I would imagine that that scenario is not something which is entirely uh, uh, um, baseless. Um, the, the the question obviously being uh, Yoni, the tunnels that exist from Gaza um, into Egypt, we know that they exist uh, um, that's how uh, um, so many of the goods do and, and, and missiles and, and weaponry does flow into Gaza that's how they can continue firing weapons uh, um, and, uh, uh, and missiles even 23 days into this uh, uh, war um, who controls those tunnels? Do the Egyptians know about them? Um, did they just turn a blind eye until now? Um, whilst the Egyptians are preventing um, and uh, really in breach of their of their duties, preventing the the, the civilian population of Gaza, the innocents, the the, the non non combatants, from going over into uh, the Sinai um, and seeking refuge there, uh, would they be open? Do you think to uh, uh, to taking in the uh, um, the the heads of the, of Hamas and the, the 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 terrorist infrastructure and the terrorist leaders as opposed to the just the civilians 
this is of course uh, uh, something what we have to take in, into consideration i think that uh, if the leaders of the uh, hamas military branch will escape through these tunnels the egyptians uh, will let them in uh, i'm sure that they will not uh, resist it this is something we have to take in, into consideration this is why it's very important that uh, the minute the big uh, military invasion of the idf begins that the IDF should immediately take control of this uh, uh, strip of uh, five, six kilometers uh, be- on the border between Egypt and uh, the Gaza Strip, what is called the Philadelphia Axis, uh, uh, and deploy forces there uh, as a preemptive uh, uh, surprise uh, to prevent uh, the Hamas terrorists from uh, escaping from Gaza Strip to Egypt. This is very important to do in the first stage of the big invasion. I'm sure that the IDF knows that. About the tunnels that you mentioned, there, these tunnels are, are there for a long time, and the uh, Egyptian army either ignores uh, uh, the, the tunnels or even, you know, the Bedouins in Sinai who are the ones who are smuggling uh, the weapons for Hamas, they're working uh, sometimes very closely with the officers of the Egyptian army on the border. They bribe them, they pay them money, and they overlook. You know, they don't uh, try to stop these things that are going uh, under underground uh, through the tunnels into Gaza. This is how Iran is, is smuggling uh, all these uh, uh, advanced weapons uh, to Hamas through the tunnels on the border with Egypt. This is something that Israel will have to take care of uh, once he decides to occupy the, the Gaza Strip and uh, uh, just uh, uh, clean all this area from terror activities. This is a very important and crucial uh, point, the border between Gaza Strip and Egypt. And uh, the, the, those tunnels are clearly very, very active. We saw from from also from uh, uh, images uh, um, put out by the IDF, by the IDF spokesman, of the, the weapons that were seized on on and around on the terrorists and around the different areas that they'd attacked on the, on the massacre of the 7th of October, really advanced weaponry, um, rocket launchers uh, uh, um, of all kinds, um, explosive devices, um, really uh, all types of, of, of attack weapons. Um, this is weaponry which shouldn't really exist in the Gaza Strip, definitely since Israel has been... Uh, uh, um, monitoring the the flow of goods through Israel um uh, uh, that or that had come in through Israel via there and went in through the areas crossing um and obviously preventing anything from getting in through the sea that would mean that really the only source of entry of those types of weapons into uh, uh, the Gaza strip is through Egypt and it would would necessarily mean that unless the Egyptian army unless we assume that the Egyptian army and its intelligence is completely incompetent um, I think it would assume that that there must be a not a small amount of of of, of cooperation. I don't know whether it's official cooperation or or. or I don't or think. I don't just think just it's turning official. a blind eye. I don't think it's a it's an official cooperation. But uh, uh, as I told you, uh, on the ground itself, the Egyptian army uh, is working uh, closely with the Bedouin smugglers, and uh, they get money. Uh, to turn their heads away from what is happening. And I think this is uh, uh, something that Israel will have also to demand from Egypt uh, to start taking uh, care of these uh, tunnels on the Egyptian side and uh, ruin the entrances of the uh, tunnels on the other side, on the Egyptian side, uh, to Gaza Strip. This is something that the Egyptians uh, uh, made in the past, a few years ago, but uh, apparently in the last years, this thing uh, completely disappeared. They're not doing anything. And now, now your your uh, uh, estimation, Yoni, is that the Hamas leadership is only preparing the tunnels as a a, a way to to escape. They haven't left yet. No, they haven't left yet. Uh, I, by the way, I don't have uh, an intelligence uh, apparatus myself. You know, I only. Uh, from what you hear from your sources, they yeah, appear to be still in the Gaza my, Strip. My sources in Gaza, uh, the Hamas leadership uh, prepared uh, different ways to escape. They are not so 
such big heroes. You know, right now they are protected. Uh, they are in the tunnels under the hospitals. They, they feel protected. They have a lot of uh, weapons inside the uh, tunnels. They have food. They have uh, water. They have gasoline. They have electricity. Uh, and they have uh, um, also workshops underground to manufacture uh, rockets and they have drones. Everything is under the ground. But they also take into consideration the possibility uh, that uh, Israel will eventually reoccupy the Gaza Strip. So, so this is an emergency route to escape to, to Egypt. And the only way it can be done is by the tunnels, these special tunnels that they uh, built. Uh, I don't know if the Egyptians are aware of it or the IDF uh, is, uh, knows exact location, but the Israeli intelligence knows that they are preparing. This is something like half official from the Israeli army. The Israeli army knows that there are escape uh, tunnels prepared uh, on the border with Egypt uh, for the Hamas leadership. So so, so that brings us obviously to, to the next subject, which... Uh... Um, which could also be a very dangerous development. And that is if the tunnels exist and the Hamas leadership is prepared to use them to escape the Gaza Strip um, if Israel comes too close, will they be using, uh, uh, um, in your opinion, those tunnels also to uh, um, to smuggle the, 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 the kidnap victims outside of the Gaza Strip and into Egypt? Yes, they, I can only speculate. Uh, I don't see them uh, managing to smuggle uh, uh, all their hostages. They we're talking about two, more than 200 hostages. This is a, a huge operation and it cannot happen without uh, Israeli intelligence uh, knowing that or seeing signs for that. Uh, but I, I can think about the possibility that they will try uh, to take a few of the hostages who are soldiers and officers, and I cannot go into the specifics of the of the of the people that are involved in it. From the, you know the Israeli hostages that, that are they serve in the Israeli army. You know we cannot talk about that because it's very sensitive information. But they might try to take some of these uh, officers, Israeli officers that are in captivity, to take them with them as a as human shield or as something to uh, uh, to negotiate about as, as a bargaining about this this is a, a possibility but, but what we've seen from Hamas until now is is not a small amount of of also uh, um psychological uh, um warfare using uh, um using the kidnapped victims um releasing to releasing to um uh, claiming from the start that uh, once a, a, um once a ground incursion starts that they would start executing and publicly executing the hostages. That's something which we haven't seen yet, thank God. And 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 so where do you think the what do you think Hamas is now planning with the hostages? Look, I you know, we heard uh, it's good that you brought up this question, Maurice, because uh, we had we hear a lot of uh, declarations and speculations in the media. Some of it is disinformation of Hamas coming from Gaza. Some of it is in the, on the international media. Yesterday there was a statement by Yihya Sinwar, uh, the master terrorist in Gaza, uh, saying that he's willing to make a, a, an exchange deal with Israel, releasing all the hostages for releasing all the Palestinian terrorists in Israeli jails, like an uh, exchange. I think we should take very seriously uh, this uh, attempt of Hamas. This is a disinformation campaign. They are lying. Uh, they know that the only guarantee uh, that they have for their lives is to keep holding Israelis uh, uh, hostages. Otherwise, once they make this uh, a trade with Israel, exchange of, of prisoners, uh, then they have no immunity anymore because uh, the Israeli army will kill them. So their interest uh, is to keep uh, prisoners, Israeli prisoners, as long as possible, not to not to trade them, not to negotiate about their fate, because this is what they consider it their defense, their, uh, their human shield. They will not give it up. So uh, all these things that we hear in the media is a lot of disinformation of Hamas, uh, and they uh, want uh, to keep uh, uh, these uh, hostages in their hands. They're even talking about 
taking more hostages from the Israeli uh, soldiers that went into Gaza in the last two days. So we have to look uh, at this matter very, 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 very seriously, not to believe what Hamas is saying. This is, uh, they consider the Israelis uh, hostages as guarantees uh, for their safety. And this is why I think that eventually the Israeli army will not have any choice but to have this big grand invasion into Gaza and occupy all of Gaza Strip. We have to understand more as to what is happening now on the ground in the north of Gaza mostly. You talked about this incursion, Israeli incursion in your introduction. Uh, this is something which is not big. We have to, we have to know that. And uh, apparently, from what I understand from the Israeli military, the uh, political echelon uh, took the advice of President Biden uh, and the, the advice of uh, uh, Lloyd Austin, the Minister of Defense, uh, not to have a big invasion into Gaza, but to uh, start with the small raids here and there in different locations. Today, for instance, there was a raid uh, 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 of the Israeli army in the north of Gaza. And uh, the Israeli army was surprised by terrorists, Hamas terrorists, who came out of a tunnel over, all of a sudden. But uh, the soldiers, these soldiers uh, were very good, and they killed about 20 terrorists uh, today, only today, a few hours ago. So this is something uh, which is still uh, developing. But I think that Israel in the coming days will try to have different raids uh, of the IDF in different locations in Gaza. The big invasion is not happening yet, yet. Right. I, I, I would just like to, if, if I may, go go back to the subject of the um, of, of the, the 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 hostages and uh, Yichie Sinwar's uh, um, suggestion um, of, of a deal. And I would suggest not only caution regarding the propaganda nature of that statement, but rather even more caution actually entertaining the idea of moving forward with some type of a prisoner release in order to gain uh, um, the freedom of the hostages. Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Yoni, um, with the exception of the Shalit deal, um, as part of my, my army career, I was involved in almost every single um, prisoner release that Israel conducted from 1998 through uh, 2016. Um, every single one of them was an abject failure. Every single one of them brought about more violence, more terror, the, uh, the the Jibril release in 1985 already gave birth to uh, um, what happened there was was Israeli soldiers were kidnapped in Lebanon. Um, Israel released some uh, uh, 1,150 uh, um, uh, uh, terrorists. Those terrorists then became the backbone of what was then called the Intifada, the popular uprising um, in 1987, and 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 caused the death of really of of, of tens and hundreds of Israelis. Um, if we now look at the last big prisoner release, um, the 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 Gilad Shalit deal in 2011, it was divided into two sections. The first section was 477 ter terrorists who were released. In the second section, 550 people. Um, most of those terrorists who were released in the first part of the deal um, returned immediately to terrorism. In 2014, I was the the head of the prosecution for Judea and Samaria when uh, Hamas terrorists kidnapped the three uh, uh, teenagers in, in Gush Etzion and murdered them. Um, at the time, we uh, I initiated the re-arrest of many of the terrorists who had been released to Judea and Samaria as part of the Gilad Shalid um, deal. Um, at the time, already, there were 60 terrorists. Half of the terrorists who had been released um, were, again, involved in terrorism. Many of the other terrorists who were released in that first part of the deal were released to Gaza. They then formed the backbone of every uh, um, incidence of terrorism um, that's now going right, on. The, the ones that were released on Shalit deal and headed by Yichir Sinwar, those are the ones who planned the massacre in... Uh, in exactly uh, that. Yichir Sinwar was, was released. There was another, uh, uh, just uh, just from the uh, almost from the ground level, um, a, a, a platoon commander in the Nukhba forces, Ali Kadi, um, who was uh, um, arrested and prosecuted for the murder of Sasa Nouriel um, in 2005, sentenced to life sentence. Um, so he was also part of that whole uh, uh, process. And there already are dozens of others 
who were released in the Shalit deal and then uh, um, went on to uh, uh, or continued on with their terrorism specifically and now uh, participated in uh, the October 7 massacre. And so any terror, any release of terrorists will only be seen as a prize and as a reward for the, the October 7 massacre. And whilst uh, the goal, obviously, of, of freeing the, the, the hostages um, is one of the substantive goals um, and major goals of the of, of Israel at the moment, um, I would suggest that, that, that going about it by releasing more terrorists who will in the future um, murder more people is just not the right way to go about it. We now, as a result of, but already by the, the by the 6th of October, um, 2023, we could count 12 different people who had been murdered by those, uh, by the terrorists, directly by the terrorists released in the Shalit deal. Now we have 1,400 uh, uh, plus victims of terror as a direct result of involvement of the terrorists released in the Shalit deal. Um, releasing terrorists is not a good option. Um, it's not a good idea. Um, and I would uh, really advise the, the Israeli government um, to avoid any type of uh, um, discussion even on, on that path. Um, so that's uh, uh, um, at least my two cents uh, uh, based on my experience um, with that. As I understand it, by the way, Yoni, I understand that the rest of the people released in the Shalit deal um, back to Jira and Samaria have also now been arrested um, and, yes. uh, um, and they are subject to uh, uh, returning to prison as, as well. Um, but so you know, the Hamas, uh, Hamas uh, something very important we forgot to say, uh, the Hamas military uh, uh, wing offices in Istanbul in Turkey all of the leaders there are those uh, terrorists who were released in the Shalit deal. Headed by Zahra Jabrin. Yes, and they are the ones who are planning the terror attacks from Istanbul in Israel and in the in the Judea and Samaria. So, yep. so this is something that Israel was is demanding from Turkey over, I think, 10 years, 11 years already, uh, to uh, close down these offices in Istanbul. This is the big building uh, uh, three stories building full of terrorists uh, and they're not only uh, conducting terror activities or, or, or planning terror activities, they also have a, a special equipment to spy on the Israeli army from Turkey. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, something very, very uh, dangerous. Israel uh, put pressure on uh, Turkey to uh, close down these offices. Uh, Erdogan he refused. He said, no, they are not terrorists. And he, he only he agreed to uh, ask uh, Saleh el who was then uh, based on this in uh, Istanbul and was in charge of this office. He only asked him to leave. And Saleh el left for uh, Doha in Qatar. And then uh, as a result of American pressure on Qatar, he had to move to Lebanon. And now he's hiding in uh, Dahia, uh, 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 in Beirut, uh, near Hassan Asral. I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, we saw uh, um, yesterday um, the response of, of, of Erdogan. Uh, um, he is a supporter of terrorism. He is a supporter of Hamas. Um, uh, history will, uh, um, will, will look back and say there are those who supported um, civilized uh, uh, human humanity after the 7th of October, and there are those who supported terrorism um, Erdogan is on the side of terrorism. PA leader Mahmoud Abbas is also on the side of terrorism. Um, and, and so everyone should uh, understand exactly who's on the side of civilization and who's on the side of the genocidal terrorists. Um, that's something which is important going forward. Um, we're going to wrap it up for today, Yoni. At the moment, we don't have any questions. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will be back again. Um, tomorrow at four o'clock Israel time. Don't forget our clocks changed. I know that the clocks changed in England. Um, I'm not sure about the clocks in America yet, as I believe they haven't yet changed. Um, so uh, just make sure that you uh, check in at the right time. Um, we look forward to seeing 